Well, we're sitting here in the master bathroom that we are remodeling here. And here you can see we have the bathroom vanity in place. And we were just alerted to an issue by the granite installers who are going to put a granite counter with a sink on top of this vanity. So by the time they put that counter here and then add their little four inch backsplash of granite, we see it's gonna run up against the bottom of this electrical switch here, this light switch on the wall. And I noticed throughout this condo that some of the strange things the builders did was they made a lot of the switches really low. So I don't know if when they contracted this condo to be built, if it was built for somebody who was disabled or in a wheelchair, but <clears throat> anyway, the light switch is too low. So this is going to have to be moved up. Jeff here and welcome back to our channel if this is your first time visiting us this is a great time for you to take a look at the, the subscription button down below and you want to click on that so you can be aware of all of the other videos that we put out to help you so this is all for you my friends and at the same time when you subscribe make sure you click on that bell icon right next to it that will appear when you subscribe because it doesn't make any sense if you subscribe without being alerted to every time we put up a new video okay and then if you have any questions at all, leave them down in the comments and we'll answer them for you. So let's get started with today's project. So you can see we've moved the, we've drawn the line here, how far we think it should go. And the question is, that could be a, a big problem for a lot of you is, hey, if I have to move an electrical outlet or a switch outlet box up the wall or down the wall, can I do it? And that's always been the problem because when the builders wire the place up, They'll have wires coming like right to the box here that are just right sized and that's it. So you wouldn't really be able to move the box much. But the Lord has blessed us today, my friends, because as I look closely inside the outlet there, see the wires are coming from above. So that's a good sign. That means that we can take this whole outlet box for this light switch and we can move this light switch up the wall. A few inches now had it been the case where we needed to go down the wall well we'd be in really big trouble because the wires are going to end here and let's say we needed to come way down here we'd be in big trouble and that would be an ugly scenario because what you would have to do then is wire in another outlet box and do a junction inside that box you can't do a hidden junction inside the wall it's illegal although I see morons doing it all the time. I can't tell you how many times I've found hidden junctions in the walls when I have torn apart walls during our remodeling efforts. So I found my National Electric Code book here and I was looking through it and there's nothing in the book where the National Electric Code specifies any particular height for light switches in a room. But I can tell you that what most builders typically do is they set them at a height on the wall such that the bottom of the switch is 48 inches off the floor. But in this case, what we're going to do is I have to, um, I have to set this switch to be the top of the switch at 48 inches off the floor because of the cavity here for the medicine cabinet. It's gonna be an obstruction for us, so we wouldn't be able to, otherwise the outlet would be right here, so you can't do that. So I, I decided I'll make the top of the outlet 48 inches so essentially we're moving the outlet up, it looks like about six inches or so, and that will give them enough clearance for the granite guys when they come in here to set their granite and their, their little side splash here. And then we'll patch up whatever hole we have here. Now the thing to keep in mind too here, the best way to approach this, and remember you probably have wire coming right down the wall here. So I'm gonna use my, this is always my cutting tool of choice for drywall, my Sonic Crafter here. And we're going to use the Sonicrafter because if you look at that drywall blade on there, this drywall blade kind of sets the depth for you so you can't go further than the depth of the drywall. So it, it would be virtually impossible for me to hurt any wire back in here. So we're going to just cut two slits that go straight up like this and straight up like this. That way we'll have it all wide open in there and all we got to do is separate this outlet box from the stud 
and then move the outlet box up. Now, we need we want to know which side the stud is on, right? So I'm going to get my little stud finder out and we'll try it out. All right, so as I run my stud finder across the wall there, see those three LEDs light up? That means just as I suspected, the stud is on the left-hand side of the outlet. And it makes sense too, because you can see it would be right on the left side of where the medicine cabinet fits in there too. So we know that this outlet is attached to the stud on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and start slicing up the wall here. All right, so I've got some protective paper here just to kind of shield the area here from all the dust and debris. And we're going to start slicing right up there now. Okay. So we've got that cut and let's pull this piece out. And you can see where we dodged the bullet, but you see my point about using the Sonic Crafter where the blade just barely reaches the other side of the drywall because you can see that the wire wasn't even a half away, half an inch away. So now we can just slide our outlet up the stud there. So there's our stud, the metal stud here. Okay, so we went and opened up the hole a little more wider to the left mainly because of the bracket here, see? It's a little bit overkill, but so now that we have the bracket exposed, we can just pull out the whole thing and we'll unscrew it and we'll move the outlet all the way up to the top here and we'll re-screw it back into the stud. So there we've moved the outlet from down here to up here. All we have to do now is Put a few screws in there and we'll be just fine. This worked out very perfectly for us. All right, so there we have it all nice and secured. Nice and rock solid there. This was a textbook maneuver here. So now all we have to do is just patch up the drywall around this and do a little bit of tape and mudding and we're done. By the way, I wanted to point out something to you here. This wall is the next door neighbor and she smokes like really, really bad. So we did another video about how to stop cigarette smoke from coming in from your neighbor's place. But basically I just wanted to point out to you real quick, when we patch up with the drywall, we'll have to caulk along where the drywall meets this outlet box here in order to seal it up. And in fact, we've already sealed this outlet. So if you look in the back there, See all those holes there? We've actually covered those with silicone caulk because the smoke was coming in through there and it was coming in through the outlet. And that's why we've also, we bought these gaskets too as a third uh, measure that you'll put them over here like this. And when you put the plate down, it'll keep any air conditioning from seeping into your wall and it'll prevent any smoke smell that might end up inside that wall. It'll prevent it from coming back out into your uh, bathroom here through this outlet through this gasket but we did a whole video on this on how to prevent smoke from coming in from your neighbor's apartment and I'll put the link to that down below in the description for you so let's go ahead and get started on the drywall patch alright so we have it all taped up and ready to go for drywall mud now these pieces here were a little bit thinner than these pieces. They weren't quite as thick. So this was half inch and that was 5 eighths inch thick drywall. So what we're going to do is just kind of mud thickly over this area here to level it out. Okay, so here we are. It looks a lot nicer now. The granite guys kind of showed up a little early and went ahead and installed the granite here. But at least we got in and went before them and we were able to get the switch raised up a significant distance instead of before it would have been running into the granite here. So we have probably two more layers of drywall mud to skim around on here on this wall here. We'll sand it down and we'll get it painted. We'll get our we'll get our medicine cabinet in there and uh, this is coming along very nicely. This is a nice cream colored cabinet that I had put in here 
And then um, granite guys, we had them do the sink as part of the granite. And I'm going to be putting in my faucet here with the LED on the end. These are really cool. So there you have it, folks. And we'll see how it looks once we get it sanded and painted. All right, so we've added another layer here and things are starting to smooth out a little more. So because of the nature of the way this wall was and it was a little wavy to begin with, what we're going to do here is once this dries, I'm going to sand it down a little bit more to get some of these uh, ridges down and everything. And we'll try to do a skim coat starting in the corner that goes all the way across here. So this will help us smooth out this whole wall. And there's, because there's bumps and stuff here left over from them, what the builder did and all that. And it's pretty hard to just, you know, come right up against them like this and, and uh, get a nice clean matchup. You're better off just doing a skim layer over the whole thing later on and making it all even so that you'll never be able to tell. So we're going to sand it down once it dries and put on another coat. Okay, so I've sanded it down now and it's nice and smooth. All the edges are are nice and smooth down. They should look like the edge of a cloud when you're done sanding. You shouldn't see any lines. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to do a skim coat that goes all the way across. It'll come to here and then we'll try to pick up some here and get on the top and the bottom. But because we have all of these little nooks and crannies here to fill in. So we want it to look as smooth as possible. Because once it's painted, it's going to look a lot different than this. You'll see every little mark on the wall. <clears throat> well, there's our final skim coat there. So once this dries, we'll come back and we'll sand it. We have to blend this back down right there. And we'll sand gently around all in that area there and blend that over there. And then we'll paint it and it'll be just like it never happened. So you remember yesterday where this outlet switch here was, this light switch was down here and it would have collided here with the backsplash. So you can see what an easy fix that is to um, move the outlet switch up. Well here is our final repair here and you can see it came out pretty good. It's all painted now and everything. We just have a few more areas to touch up paint and some little pock marks that we want to fill in with uh, a little bit of uh, dap. So anyway, um, this is how it looks. And I always use a metal plate. And as you can see, there's a slight bend in the wall here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this back off later. And we're going to bend this a little bit to make this plate conform around the wall a little better. Um, this is why I don't like to use these plastic ones. These are cheapy. Even though this one looks you know, ruggedized and everything. And they all say on the product that they don't shatter, they don't crack, but they do. They always do. Um, you know, we've always been plagued with whatever project we end up on. The walls are just, they're just not flat. And so you try to put a plastic outlet plate on a curved wall like that. And you're going to find out real quick that uh, this isn't going to work for you. It's going to crack on you. So anyway... This is our project, and I hope this was useful to you. And if you like this, um, please give us a thumbs up down below. Don't forget to subscribe also by clicking on the subscribe button down below. And click on the bell icon so that you'll be notified of every new video that we put out for you. And we'll see you folks next week.